yeah, we're going to go a little bit deeper into having rules and identifying trends. And hopefully by the time that I'm done with my session, you're going to have another really good tool for your toolbox. And also it should help prevent you from running into a few problems that are common that we see when people come into this workshop like this, they spend a week with us. Um, they learn a few things that all of a sudden it opens their eyes to a way of looking at the market that they've never seen before and things are starting to make sense. And so they got this new confidence and then instead of like putting forth the time and coming up with rules and a plan, they just start running with it and then they end up in, you know, having some troubles. And so I'm going to help, help you try to avoid that by giving you a few more tools and showing you a couple of different ways to look at the market. That way you don't get caught off guard because, um, after, I mean, if you've been with us, if you've been paying attention at all, if you're looking at this at this screen right now, it's a New Zealand dollar 60 minute. Who here could tell me what type of trend we're in? Every, everybody should know. You should be able to look at this and see when we're in a bullish trend versus when we're in a bearish trend, right? Akil talked about it earlier this week. It's like if it goes from the bottom left to the top right, or if it goes from the top left to the bottom right, it's pretty easy to distinguish, right? And so we kind of started the week talking about the very specifics. We went through candlesticks and Akil talked about the story and the information that's being told and what you can glean from the market just by looking at the individual candlesticks. And then after we started with that foundation, we added in new structure high and new structure low, talking about how we identify trend, um, looking for a break of trend and how we can create specific rules for that, right? So if we're looking at this, hopefully earlier in the week, you're going through and you started drawing out your impulse legs, your outside return, impulse leg, outside return, breakthrough structure. Where do we come back to? Down into previous structure, right? And so as you're drawing this if you never heard about these types of things before and you start drawing it out all of a sudden it just kind of starts to make sense and it makes it easier to identify what you're actually looking at you're starting to learn the language of the market you remove these here all right so you're feeling confident um if we continue to draw out our lines let's say we're going here right we put in our absolute top. Then we come down outside return. Where do we come up to? We come up into structure and then we come back down. And where do we come into? We come into structure outside return. And then when we finally break through our structure point, that's when we move into a bearish trend, right? So this stuff right here is, is pretty simple. The problem that we run into is that markets don't always look like this. Okay, we Greystone actually brought up the Ford chart. You could look at basically any equities chart, Tesla, go to pound dollar, anything. Go back to April of last year, and you can look at most charts are going to look something like this, right? We bottomed out, and then it's just been this clear trend. So it's these types of these types of charts, this type of price action. Um, it makes it very easy to be a trend trader. It makes it very easy to understand what type of trend we're in. And it's very easy to understand what type, what side of the market you need to be on, right? The problem that we run into is that, unfortunately, markets don't always look like this, okay? Sometimes they look a little bit more like this, right? And so imagine, and actually, let me just bring up this chart because I've got it, I've got it zoomed in a bit. Let's say we're that guy that we spent, we spent a week right here, and we learned about new structure high and we learned about impulse legs and we learned about trend continuation but I maybe uh, I didn't go through all the time to create a rule set and so I'm just kind of taking a few of the of the tips and and suggestions that I learned putting these concepts I'm going to start trading haven't done any back testing yet so I want you guys to assume and just walk with me here um, we are new trader right and I'm drawing in my impulse legs right and then I have a return and I look here and I look left. And I'm like, yep, just like Akil taught me, I should come back into structure and then we should have a new structure high and then we get an outside return. And where does this one come in? It comes look left right here, structure leaves clues. So clearly we're in a, a bullish trend now. And so I'm gonna go ahead and buy it, right? That's what you're thinking. 
And then as we walk forward, you're like, yep, I remember Akil. He, he taught me during the candlestick session. He told me what this wick tells me about the momentum and the buying pressure that comes in right here. So you're feeling pretty good. You're, you, you made the right decision or so you thought. And, and then market goes against you. And, and so you thought the market was going to go up. You saw the confirmation. There was some buying pressure, another green candle, and then boom stopped out and you're thinking ah what happened akil told me i have a new structure high outside return it comes into structure bullish trend i bought it come on akil right that's what you're thinking and then this is what happens and you're thinking okay well it wasn't right that time okay so we came back tested structure thought it was going to go up and then here <clears throat> we finally break through structure to the downside right so right here on this candle got a new low so you're selling it you're like yep see i sold it and then we got those candle wicks every time the market comes back up into that structure selling pressure comes in i'm feeling good right and then you're like oh no oh no oh no uh, oh man come on again like i should have known of course i mean i got fool me once Shame on me. Fool me twice. Shame on a keel. Or is, wait, is that how it works? I don't know. So now in your mind, you're like, okay, clearly. Yeah. Obviously, how could I have thought? Nope. I, you know, I made that mistake once. I made it again. I'm not going to make it a third time. Clearly big green candle momentum shifting. Uh, this has to be bullish trend. Now going to buy it up and boom again. Okay. And just this back and forth and you're feeling terrible. Now we break out to the downside. How could I be such a fool? No, nope, clearly we're in a, a bearish trend. And then the market comes back up and boom, new structure highs. And so like in your mind right now, okay, the, the, the trend trader that came in and learned a few things, um, hating life right now, okay? Um, not feeling so great about, you know, having just started their account or deciding to be a trend trader, whatever, okay? But this is the, the stuff that happens to our psychology when we don't understand what's going on in the market, right? And we don't have a plan. So I, I just kind of wanted to walk through that because I think it's a critical point to make that we've been in a very unique period, right? So like I said, going back to 2020 early, um, we had a big drop off and then the markets have just been largely on a tear. And so we have a lot of new traders that came in. We, we saw this, we had a lot of new traders that came in last year around that April timeframe. And so for a new trader, like all they know is just this beautiful trend, right? And it makes it very easy. Just hey, break out and then wait for the, wait for a retest of structure and buy it again, buy and hold, buy and hold, right? But like I said, unfortunately, markets don't always work like that. So I want to make sure that you guys have a couple of extra tools. Akil talked about Fibonacci here um, in the previous session, but I was going to dive into that a little bit deeper because as we went back, let me just grab... Let me go back to this original chart here. <clears throat> so when we're looking at a chart like this and we talk about wanting to position ourselves in strategic areas as traders, we want to try to get in and out of the market where there's going to be a high likelihood of us making money. It's, it's that simple. I really, for me, thinking about trading as a war, I don't know why, but that's just always resonated with me. Right. And so if you're in battle, you want to position yourself in an area where you can maximize your effect, but also minimize your exposure, right? You don't want to be the fool that just runs around in the middle of a field shooting off, right? That's not going to work out very well for you. You're not going to last very long. So that's why Akil was talking to you about identifying structure. And yesterday as he was going through his session, he was he did like the three minute test, right? He said, give me any chart, any time frame." He pulls it up and immediately knows whether or not he wants to be involved. And most of the time when we looked at those, it was, yeah, that's hit three minute, three second, sorry, three second. Um, but we could pull up that chart and any professional trader can look at that and say, oh, do I want to be involved right now or not? Because of where the market's at and they understand the rules. And more often than not, as Akil was going through and doing that little exercise, when you pull up a chart and you would see that the market was basically in the middle of no man's land, he was like, I want nothing to do with that, right? Because he's had that experience where, uh, you know, as we were just walking.